It's a late, late Friday night, and I'm down in my dingy basement. Why am I down here? What am I doing? I'm getting my supplies ready, because tomorrow it's supposed to be over 40 degrees. And then for an extended period beyond that, it's supposed to be over 40 degrees, which means it's maple syrup season. And that's something that I hadn't talked with you guys about, uh, because, I mean... Frankly, there was other stuff going on, and it uh, wasn't time to talk about it yet. So I've been making maple syrup for maybe five years now, and uh, started out just doing it as a hobby. And it's still just a hobby, although <laughs> every year it gets to be less and less like a hobby <laughs> and gets to a scale that's more approaching a job. This year, I invested in a new piece of equipment. Um, I ordered a professional, well, I shouldn't say professional, it's still, like I said, a hobby scale evaporator. Basically, this is a nice in-between sized evaporator I ordered from um, Smoky Lake Maple Products over in Wisconsin. And uh, I haven't put it all together yet, but uh, I've been painting it. They send you the arch and the pan and all the different parts for it, and um, but it needs to be painted. They don't ship it painted because it would get scuffed up. So they leave it up to the buyer to do that, so I've been working on that tonight down here. I'm getting all my tapping equipment and stuff ready to go. And so tomorrow morning I'm hoping to get over to the woods where the where we have some maple trees and uh, start putting some taps in. If I could get 10 taps in tomorrow, I'd be a pretty happy boy. And then uh, a neighbor just told me I could tap some of their trees. So um, the most I've ever run in any given spring was about 15 taps, and that was too much to keep up with. I was mostly limited by my evaporator setup. I was running a little pan. I could boil maybe three gallons an hour if things were going really well. Um, this new pan should allow me to evaporate nine to 15 gallons an hour. So that gives me room to tap more trees and not spend all my time boiling sap. Um, so let me show you my parts here. All right, forgive the bad lighting. It's an old house, but um, these are all the metal parts. There's the door end panels. These are some base panels, side panels, bottom panels. This is going to be, <laughs> when I get it all put together, this is going to be the Dauntless Evaporator from Smoky Lake Maple, if you want to look it up. Um, or you just, you know, stay tuned. I'll edit the video together and uh, you can see it all put together. So I'm really excited about this because like I said, um, the big limiting factor for me in making maple syrup was always the evaporation rates I could get with a smaller pan and a homemade kind of cobbled together setup. <laughs> the first year I did it, I actually used an old surge milker bucket from our uh, from our dairy farming days. That, for those of you who don't know, that's the bucket you would hang under the cow um, when you were milking with a vacuum type system. We had a few of those laying around. <laughs> and so I used that as an evaporator. And that didn't work too well at all. But um, <laughs> since then, I've, my ambitions have grown. And uh, this is going to be great to put this all together. I can't imagine what a nine gallon evaporation rate is going to look like. Um, it comes with a nice stainless steel pan that's got the dividers in it, so it gets a nice sap gradient going. Um, the syrup thermometer, um, all kinds of good stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to putting that together, and we can go through that together. It should be it should be a lot of fun. This is like my favorite thing to do this time of year because. You know, it's, it starts to get into March and the weather starts to warm up and you can't really do farm stuff per se. Um, but this makes you feel like you're making some progress. All the syrup that I make currently is just for us and our household. I don't sell any yet. Um, I'd like to maybe down the road at some point. Uh, but, but for now we're just doing it, we're just doing it for our own use. And I do, I do give some away as uh, gifts and it's really an, it's kind of a neat thing to be able to give to people. Um, so that's really the only, the only use for it right now. For us, it's great because it's kind of a nice, uh, homemade sugar source for us. It's a little healthier, I think, um, than, than store-bought refined sugar. So the, the more of it I make, the more of it we can use for, our general cooking and baking. I even put it in my coffee if we have enough of it. And of course, the vast majority of it goes on French toast and pancakes, of course. I'm gonna get prepped here for the rest of this evening, and then we will pick this video up again when I'm out tapping trees, hopefully tomorrow morning. Here we are, it's Saturday morning. It's a frosty day. It actually feels kinda of cold to be out here doing this. Uh, I've got corn pickups later this morning, so I had to get out here early, but Weatherman says the temperature's coming up today, so so uh, I've got uh, about 10 taps with me um, and the equipment. 
and I'm going to go see if I can uh, get these things set up before I've got other duties today. So let's go tap some trees. Got a cab load of stuff here. Uh, usually it gets to be too much to carry, so we're going to break it down into some smaller loads. Um, mostly I like to use these sap sack hangers. Um, I started out using buckets and vinyl tubing, and that, that works fine, but it's a lot more equipment. These work really well. I was kind of skeptical. I bought a few, um, gave them a try just to see if they were any good. And uh, I love them because you can, you can take them off the spout. I'll show you when we get in there. But you can take them off the spout. You can dump out the sap in them without having to take anything apart. Um, and then just hang them back up. Uh, so they're really quick and easy. And um, they, don't, they don't take up a lot of space to store. The plastic bags uh, for the sap are really durable. I haven't had any problems with those. So... Um, that's what I like to use. First time through the woods for the season is always kind of a slog. There's usually deep snow and no paths yet. By the time I get through here collecting sap a few times, I'll have some paths kind of tramped down. <sighs> okay, I didn't bring a tripod or anything, uh, so we're going to have to do this uh, kind of free freestyle. But um, when I drill the holes, I just use an old auger bit here and... Um, I used to be real concerned about not drilling them too deep, but I actually drill almost the length of that uh, flighting on there. Because otherwise I found if you don't drill them deep enough, you don't get a good sap run. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow the sap to escape. Now I used to worry that drilling these holes would hurt the tree. Everything I read said they wouldn't, but after a few years of experience, I can tell you that is my tap hole from last year. And it is just about totally filled in with new wood. So. The trees really do heal themselves up pretty quick. Um, it's, it's impressive how little damage it does. And as long as you pick the right size tree, eight inches in diameter or bigger to tap, it's fine. They're, they do great. Um, really big trees you can put a couple of taps into. There's three, that one, that one, that one. Those are some of the mama trees around here. They, uh, <laughs> I think a lot of these other ones were probably seeded by them. They're getting pretty craggly in their old age, but they still do uh, they still do yield a pretty good amount of sap when you get them going. They usually don't run till later. It's really interesting which trees run first and which trees run later. There's there's a big one up there, kind of hard to see through the brush here. That one always does pretty well. So when you only do a few trees, you kind of get to know them and they all have their own little unique personalities. It's kind of fun. Okay, so we just pound that tap in enough that it's hanging uh, nice and tight, not so not so hard that it splits the tree open. And then these uh, sap sack holders are configured like so. They have kind of an inner ring that you poke the bag up through and roll it over the top of that ring. And then that slides into the frame. And then the sap drips off the tap and into the bag. And the whole thing actually gets a little bit tighter and more secure the more liquid there is in it. Um, and that's it. On to the next one. <laughs> well, we've got little splotches of blue all over the woods now. Couple of them there, got one up there. So I've got five in so far. It took me maybe 15 minutes. Um, I gotta run back and grab more supplies here. I only brought so many uh, bag holders and, and taps with me because my bag that I'm using to carry stuff in isn't that big. But uh, I think that'll be it here for today. Just get these in and get the sap running. But then we've got uh, the evaporators all painted now. We need to get the arch bolted together and set up, get the pan set up on it. Um, I was just using like a Rubbermaid garbage can to store my sap in. Uh, I've got a line on a one of those caged food grade um, totes, liquid totes. Um, so I'm going to see if I can pick one of those up. Um, that should be more than enough to store sap in if I decide to increase the number of taps. This is early. I was actually kind of in a scramble. Normally I don't tap trees until about the 15th of March. This is leap day right now. This is February 29th. So we're, at, we're a week or two ahead of schedule. But the weather report looks really good. Um, it's supposed to be above 40 and below freezing every night for a while coming up. So this was the time to do it. And so when you got to go, you got to go. So to recap the day, tapped those trees this morning. Went to the Land Stewardship Project's uh, farm crisis meeting in Mankato late this morning into the afternoon. Came home, did a couple other things. Hauled some evaporator parts to the farm. Now I'm loading up 20 bags of corn for a corn pickup tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow... We're bolting the evaporator together. That's my day in a nutshell. Right. It is Sunday afternoon, and we're getting back around to putting this evaporator together. It's a beautiful, beautiful spring day out here. Spring come early. 
what better news could you get, right? Anyway, I've got some parts in the back of the truck here. I've got some more in the garage, which is in front of me and you can't see. And I'm gonna start putting this together. Um, Smoky Lake Maple does all their assembly videos online. So I've got to kind of watch that while I'm putting it together and figure out the steps. And um, yeah, hopefully in an hour or two here, we should have a nice dauntless syrup evaporator ready to go. Naturally, there would be one part I would forget to paint and it's the handle for the door. So <laughs> we're gonna be putting some coats of paint on that while we're putting everything together. All right, I'm partway through the assembly process. I kind of got cruising and um, didn't bother to stop and take too much footage, but it's looking really good so far. Um, excellent, excellent quality craftsmanship. I did have a few fitment problems. Uh, I was I was ready to cuss and swear, but um, it was really operator error on my part. Once I went back and looked through the, the video, I could tell I had just goofed it a little. So I had to loosen some things up and uh, realign a couple of things, and then it all went really well. Whew, got her all done. Took a little bit a little, a little bit longer than I thought it was going to to get it all assembled, but there it is, the Dauntless Evaporator from Smoky Lake Maple with a divided pan and a pre-warmer pan. I'm not quite 100% done. I still need to add some more chimney pipe sections and uh, I should level it and make sure it's all level front to back, side to side. Yeah, it just really, really turned out awesome. Um, Fire brick inside of there, ceramic insulation, everything's protected. Nice fire grate. It's a sliding flue system to control the airflow in and out. Um, I can't wait to use it. I think this is just going to be so much fun. <laughs> I, lo I love. I'm just. I can't hide it. This time of year, making syrup is one of my favorite things to do. Even though it doesn't make us any money, it's just a hobby. Uh, it's agricultural all the same. Making syrup is an agricultural process, so we got to include it in the farming operation. All right, a couple of days have gone by. Yesterday, didn't do a lot as far as chronicling, but um, I did go and get a nice big IBC tote, a food grade tote. I've got that sitting right behind me here, 275 gallons. So that's going to be my sap storage. I had been previously using like a Rubbermaid garbage can, which hold 30 gallons and was not food grade. Uh, so we needed to change that out. Um, and then the evaporator here, I've got partly set up. Um, I'm still working on that. Just little odds and ends. Uh, can I point? I don't know. Everything's reversed when you do this, but the pan here, you had the option to order it with a cover and I figured I could bend, bend my own cause I have a sheet metal brake and aluminum coil stock. I've got kind of a neat idea on that. You know, the lid you can buy just goes over the top. It's just a, a metal lid matches the, the pan. They're pretty nice looking, but I thought, you know, since I can make my own, but I noticed it's got these folded over rails. So what I think I'm going to try to do is make a lid that can, that can slide on from the end and hook under there. And that way I don't need to put a rock on it or whatever to keep the wind from blowing it off. If we can just slide it on down the length and cover the whole pan, that would be pretty sweet. So, um, I've got an idea for that. I think we're going to try and cook that up quick today. I did pull in in the back of the truck. I've got a couple of five gallon buckets and I've got, well, maybe eight gallons of sap collected so far. So we're off to uh, an inauspicious start uh, as far as the sap goes, but the trees are running hard today. It's a really, it's a perfect day for a sap run. So um, if we can get a few more days like that, we'll be cooking. Ah, and one thing I wanted to elaborate on here too. Um, when you get these IBC totes, they have a, an odd valve on them. I hadn't seen anything like them. Seems to be kind of specific to this uh, application. But so this has got a big valve and it it snaps shut and it snaps open. So it doesn't have a lot of control uh, as far as the flow control on it. And it's made of plastic. So I would worry about opening and closing that so many times that it would just break. So I got a uh, cam lock fitting from Tractor Supply. They seem to be the only place that had them without ordering from Amazon or something and then a couple of bushings to reduce it, and then just put on a boiler faucet um, relief valve, uh, or, you know, a standard garden hose valve. They're basically the same thing. So uh, the goal, when this all comes together, what I'd like to be able to do, if I back up here, if I get enough sap in that, I can just put the forklift forks under it, and lift it up, and then run a hose to my pre-warmer pan that's gonna sit on top of the main evaporator pan. And then between that 
valve down there and the valve on the pre-warmer pan, I could probably get a nice continuous gravity flow going of cold sap getting pre-warmed and pre-warmed sap going into the boil pan. So if that works, that'd be really nice. <laughs> it's kind of, it's all a big experiment. So, uh, it, you know, it seems about as likely to work as it, as it does that it won't. That, what I'm trying to say is there's a 50% chance of success. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'm gonna cave here. I'll show you this because I don't think you've seen the sheet metal brake setup before. So we've got a 10 foot brake here uh, in the construction business. I've, I can't tell you how many miles of aluminum I've bent for uh, soffit and fascia work and cladding around door frames and all kinds of things. So uh, this, is a, this is a cool tool to have available. Um, this is my piece of metal that uh, I cut off of a, just a roll, roll of Rolex uh, trim coil. And uh, I'm just marking this out now. Normally this would be made out of steel. I've got aluminum, it's what I have to work with and I think it'll be just fine for the purpose. Um, this brake is not heavy duty enough to bend anything more than aluminum coil stock. It's what it's designed for. So that's what we're using. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, here it is so far. Uh, I've got the corners nipped. You have to lay everything out when you do sheet metal bending. And then I hemmed the edges. That's where you roll it over on itself like that. It adds a little bit of, little bit of extra strength and keeps the edges from warping. Um, so now I'm going to do some cross bends. The white side, by the way, will be up. I want to keep the raw aluminum side down towards the sap. Last thing we want to do is cook some kind of chemical PVC coating into our syrup. That'd be bad. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do those cross bends to give it uh, a little bit of extra top strength. And that's just a matter of, of rolling the sides over. One of these ends will be at a 90 degree. And so when the panel slides on, it'll, it'll slide until that end hits. That'll be the last thing that touches. But the other end, I'm just going to give it a real gentle kind of a downward spring bend. And I'm going to allow enough play in those side rails that it can kind of like ride over the top. And then when it gets to the end of the evaporator tray, it'll just drop down into place. So it won't be at a 90 degree, but it will allow uh, water to run off the edge and keep it from kind of finding its way underneath or in any way getting into the pan. All right, there it is. Uh, everything's bent the way I want it. And now I just need to cut uh, some pieces of wood uh, with the uh, miter saw, table saw, and uh, shape those the way I want. And then those are gonna get attached on the inside of these sides. And they're basically just gonna provide the sliding action so that this piece can slide onto that pan and then they'll hold it from being able to, to lift up from the wind. All right, picking it up from where we left off yesterday. I didn't finish making that cover for the sap pan. I, uh, <laughs> I kind of lost track of the time and then I checked my phone and realized uh, I had to go pick my daughter up from daycare so I had to skedaddle fast um, but uh, I'm out here in the woods today uh, I've got sap collecting going on yesterday was a pretty good run so I've got my buckets behind me there that I'm using to uh, gather up my sap today I'm gonna finish making that cover for the evaporator uh, I've got three more taps I could put in and then I'm all out of taps um, so that's where my shortfall is this year, I think, but uh, it's beautiful weather and the sap is flowing and I just really can't complain. We're a week ahead of schedule at least, maybe two. Today we're gonna uh, finish up with the evaporator setup and split some firewood. And then at that point, it's just cruising, collecting, storing, boiling. That's all it comes down to. I think this one gets best bag award for the morning. That's pretty good for one day for early in the season. Everything speeds up as you get a little bit later. 
But these early sap flows make the lightest colored syrup. In the syrup grading world, for those who care, the lighter the color, the higher the grade. It really has nothing to do with flavor. I actually think that the later run of syrup tastes better. It's darker colored, seems to have a fuller body flavor to it, to me. But then again, I'm not an expert. I just make this because I like to. <laughs> Now, I finished the cover for the evaporator pan. Well, there's my cover. And if we take a look underneath the lip here, you can see I basically created a, a hook that will go under there and hold that in place so that the wind can't blow it off. And I'll show you how it slides on from the end. So the hardest part is just getting it started. And then after that, it's pretty simple. Actually, that didn't go too bad here. There. You just get those edges hooked. And get it sliding. And there we go. That should keep the birds and the squirrels and the dust and the dirt and everything out of the sap when I am done with a boil. And that cannot, that cannot come off of there. No amount of wind is going to blow that. And the whole point is, as the syrup forms a gradient inside of there and will draw off finished syrup from this port, then when you're done boiling you can just leave whatever sap is in there in the pan for a few days or a week or however long it takes before you have enough sap to justify boiling again. So being able to just cover it up once everything is cooled down and walk away from it is really nice. In other fun news, my wife came up with the perfect name for the tote last night, and that is the BFT. For those of you who have kids, that stands for Big Friendly Tote. Yeah, you know, with a rig like this, I might finally achieve my dream of making the front cover a sap tapper monthly. There we go. That should be enough wood to get us through at least a boiling session. I'm not really sure with this new setup how fast we'll use it up. I tried to pick the driest wood I had. Um, I certainly don't have any two-year cured firewood out there, but I, I have some nice elm that was standing dead in the past year until, until they, they got cut down uh, last uh, summer. So some of that's a little, a little damp yet in the middle, but I tried to split it up small and hopefully we'll get enough BTUs out of it. Oh hey, it's snowing and it's cold. Trees aren't running, nothing to do today. Pick it up tomorrow. It's the next day. The snow squalls and cold temperatures we had yesterday have passed and it's warmed up nicely. And uh, it's Friday, so I'm gonna collect sap and depending on what we get, we may do a test boil today. I'm gonna see if uh, we've got enough to justify getting that evaporator fired up. So this ends up being a lot of trudging through the woods. There's probably other ways I could do this to make the collection more efficient. In fact, I was just watching WT Farm Girls channel. I try to keep up with the other farm YouTubers if I can. A lot of times I'm busy <laughs> and it's just hard to watch everything that comes up. But uh, I didn't realize they did maple syrup and they've got a vacuum line system, which is kind of neat. They can connect from tree to tree and get that sap all run into a central point. But uh, I can't really do that because I don't own this property where I'm tapping. And because it's not mine, because it's owned by my aunt and uncle, I try to do this in a way that's minimally invasive. You know, I can, I just walk in on foot, use my buckets, collect my sap and walk out. At the end of the season, when I pull my taps and I get out of this woods, you can't tell I've been here. And that's the idea. I don't want to make pathways. I don't want to leave equipment here. Everything's got to be cleaned up and cleared out when I'm done. So if you're wondering why I don't do this in a way that's a little bit more, I should say a little bit less labor intensive, that's the reason. I think maybe we've got a best bag award on this same tree again today. This thing really seems to do well. If you make a game out of it, it feels a lot less like work. Oh my, this might be best bag for the day. 
Got to check a couple more. We'll see. That's pretty good, though. Here's Old Faithful. It's too close to call. I'd say that's a, that's a pretty much an even tie. So far, this is MVT, most valuable tree. Okay, we got 50 gallons of sap in the BFT. I'm gonna go get the forklift and uh, we'll boost this thing up and uh, set this up and fire it up. Filling up the big fan. I mean, if you're gonna make syrup, you might as well make it with heavy equipment, right? Okay, so I just got the fire going. Um, it's not burning well yet, simply because uh, I can tell my wood's not well seasoned, like I said. It's sizzling in there and drying out as it's burning. But also, everything's gotta get warmed up. The whole evaporator system is still cold, but let's take a look here. There we go. Fire's going, so close that back up again. And on my thermometer here, basically, that's got to go all the way around, and when it's boiling, it should be at the zero mark. Um, so it started off over here more, so it's already coming up a little bit. Uh, we've got a little ways to go. <laughs> I'm not expecting this to be a fast process, but with only two inches of liquid in the pan, maybe it'll, maybe it'll uh, exceed my expectations. In the past, the old pan that I had was smaller, and it was a much thicker metal, and it seemed like it took a long time to transfer that heat into the sap. This pan is thinner and kind of more strategically designed to heat up quickly, so now we just wait and feed the fire and uh, see what happens. All right, it's been a little over an hour since we started, and we're rolling nice and steady. Temperature actually came up really quick. Within a half an hour, I was steaming and boiling, so um, that's nice. And I kind of <laughs> rigged up a little wire bale here so I can keep the pre-warmer tank going. And then that's dripping steadily into the pan. Keep our nice two inches of sap in the bottom. Fire's ripping, or ripping away in there. working really, really well. I'm really pleased. Okay, I'm about three hours into this process and I've kind of got it figured out now. Um, I've got all my valves adjusted at the right rates and I kind of know how this is going to behave. Can start to see the color. Oh, Duke. Be quiet. You can start to see the color gradient developing here where over on this end we're starting to get closer to finished syrup. And this end is where the fresh sap is coming in so it's a lot lighter. Um, I did discover that as you uh, keep burning wood in here, it, it kind of follows up the, uh, the air intake for the, for the draft system. So once I realized what was going on, I was kind of wondering why my boil was slowing down. But then I just had to get in there with a, a poker and clear the uh, coals out of the way so that the air could come in. And it brought everything right back up to temperature. And actually that helped a lot bring that boil forward in the pan so that, uh, so that my temperature gauge is now, I, I think, reading pretty accurately as far as what's actually happening. So, you know, you figure little details like that out as you go. And this whole gravity feed system off the forklift is working pretty well <laughs> for just something that's cobbled together. Um, it works great. So that's really about it. Um, I'm gonna keep going with this for another hour. i am be at about three hours here at this point. Uh, probably have done four hours when I'm finished and um, clean up. I got to go check the trees again. So I think probably at this point, this is going to be just on repeat now for a couple of weeks. Um, checking the trees, collecting the sap, doing a periodic boil. I think this will be it for now. And uh, I'll pick it up again. I'll do another video segment when we're finishing some syrup. And usually I finish the boil on uh, our kitchen stove just to kind of get the, the density dialed right in where we want it. And then we put it in just mason jars. So. We can show you that process too. Um, but this is it, there it is, the Dauntless Evaporator, the Pettibone Telehandler, the BFT, all working together uh, with a little help from me.